Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am very excited because I'm filming a Worth the Hype video, which are probably my favourite videos to film, just because I really enjoy the research part of it. And also my Ugg Tasman Worth the Hype video and my Uniqlo crossbody worth the hype video is still getting views so if that is something you're interested in I'm going to link it down below. Today we are talking about the iconic Doc Martin and before we get started I just wanted to mention that this is just my opinion. I am not an expert, I have done a little bit of research but still very much not an expert. I don't know that much about fabrics, I have no real idea on how to manufacture boots. There are great people on YouTube pulling apart Doc Martins if that's something you're interested in and really talking about what they're made of, how they're constructed, whether they are worth the money or if you can get a different boot. I'm not really going to get that in depth but those videos are excellent and I really enjoyed people cutting Doc Martens in half. So I grew up in Camden and through the 90s I very much associated Doc Martens with the punks we would see in Camden but through my research there are claims that even people like the Pope and the Dalai Lama have worn Doc Martens, but more typically we see people like Madonna, Kendall Jenner, kind of everyone wearing Doc Martens now if I'm completely honest. I had a real good look for the photos of, of the Dalai Lama and the Pope wearing Doc Martens, I can't find those, but I did find lots of articles claiming that they have worn them, so maybe it's true. Originally the Doc Martin boots were crafted as work boots. They really quickly evolved into a symbol of rebellion and lots of more alternative um, style people started wearing them like the punks. But I would say that they're much more mainstream nowadays. There are over 250 different styles. I only have two. I do probably have like the two most popular, we'll come on to them in a second, but I only have two out of 250 so I think that's definitely worth bearing in mind. And they used to be made in Britain, but now I think it's like 99%, I'm not sure if that's the correct number but I think it's about that, are made in Asia. But there's still very much a British made section on the website where you can buy British made ones. They are a little bit more expensive but supposedly they are better made. Although they're more known for their classic boots, they do everything from sandals, which have been very popular I would say recently, clogs, Mary Janes, shoes, there's a real variation, but they all kind of still have an iconic Doc Martin style to them I would say, whether it be the thick sole or the yellow stitching or kind of that slightly chunkier look to them. There are honestly so, so many. They even have like, I don't know, leopard print ones or floral ones. There's a real variety. They do kids ones. They have so much on their website nowadays. I'll quickly show you the two I have. Probably should have like specially cleaned them for this video, but I very much didn't. I just pulled them off my rack. But the first pair I have were sent to me a couple of years ago, but they have no idea I'm filming this video. I wasn't asked to film this video. And this video is very much an honest video. But the first pair I have are the classic Doc Martin 1460s, which is just the boot. Where mine kind of vary to the kind of standard pair is that mine are vegan, but we'll come on to that in a second. And then I also have the 1461s, which is the shoe. I have mine in the mono black, not with the yellow stitching. And this is the standard leather, not the vegan. As I mentioned, the, the boot I was sent a couple of years ago, and then these I bought secondhand but almost new off eBay. We'll start with the pair that I wear the most. I wear them quite a lot, I would say, and that is my 1460s vegan leather boot. I've watched quite a lot of videos here on YouTube about the vegan leather, and a lot of people are saying that the vegan leather isn't as good as the real leather. Whether that's true or not, I'm not really sure. I've, I heard some videos say that if you like kind of push on them, it creases a bit different to the real leather. I have had my boots for, this is the third winter, I believe, and I'm gonna say that they look almost as good as new, I would say. A slight crease around the front, but really nothing noticeable. Got a bit of mud on the back, but that's my own fault. I have one drawback with these. It doesn't stop me wearing them, but I kind of hate that this happens. But these squeak so much. Like, as I walk, they go squeak, 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 squeak. It's so annoying. A bit embarrassing, to be completely honest. My younger cousins find it very, very funny. But I find it a bit embarrassing, especially if I'm like walking by myself and it's like really quiet and I just come up behind someone like squeak, 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 squeak. I do not know why this happens. It doesn't happen with any of my other shoes. It very much does happen with these. Now I reach for these a lot. I think these are really, really excellent because they have a nice, thick, sturdy rubber sole on them, which yes, does squeak, but in the winter it's great because your feet aren't too close to the floor because I find that especially in the snow your feet get extra cold if you have a thinner sole. They are great in the snow because they have a really good grip on the bottom. I find that they are fairly waterproof. If I'm going somewhere that's a little bit muddy I will wear these because they are easy to clean, pretty waterproof and 
they don't I just don't slip in these touch wood I haven't slipped in them I just find them very grippy much grippier than any other shoe that I own I do find that they are not necessarily the warmest so inside mine not actually something I remove I've spoken about these before I have oh they look a bit grim now I have like furry insoles which I've, I've had in here for a little while I mean they're clean it's just that like clearly a bit of dye like off my socks and stuff has got onto them and that is something that I would recommend doing just because why not they sometimes aren't the warmest other than the squeaking i just think these are an excellent shoe and i just think they're timeless i will link the insoles down below i then have the doc martin 1461 they're a shoe i have mine in the mono black which means it doesn't have the yellow stitching mine are the standard leather not the vegan leather i got mine off ebay i paid about 20 or 30 pounds for them i actually think i got a real steal i would say they were nearly new when i got them they'd clearly been worn very very little they had a slight scuff which they still do on the toe but that was really the only sign of wear that they had they didn't really have any creasing and the one thing i will say is that i have worn these far 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 less than my boots and i would say these have a lot more creasing than the boots these like i said are the leather and the other ones are the vegan leather so actually from my personal experience i think these probably do look a little bit older than the vegan leather ones i initially went for these because i saw them on a another youtuber and i thought they looked really cool on her in hindsight, I personally really regret getting the mono, just because I feel like my uncle, who's in his 70s, has a really similar pair of shoes. And whenever I put these on, A, my cousins have to say that I, they look like I'm wearing my uncle's shoes, and B, they do just remind me of my uncle's shoes. And I think just having that yellow stitching is quite cool. But actually, I think if you are looking for a solid black shoe that will last you a long time, these are great. Even if you're just looking for a good pair of work shoes and the yellow makes them a bit too casual, then actually, I do think that the mono is a good option. I just think that I personally probably would have preferred them with the yellow stitching i think probably even more so for a man because they are a little bit masculine i think that these are an excellent kind of smart casual shoe with the stitching or without the stitching i mean i don't think they're a bad woman's shoe and actually i think i've seen some people style these up and look really really cool i just don't think that they are necessarily for me but i'm really going to try and make them work for me this aut autumn winter i think most people's concern when they buy doc martens and probably part of the reason why you're here is whether it's as painful as everyone says to break them in now obviously this very much depends on you your feet how much you walk all those sort of things personally i find that pretty much every shoe almost every shoe maybe 75 percent of shoes really have a breaking in period for me i find that with flip-flops I find that with trainers, I find that with Birkenstocks, my foot just has to get used to a shoe and it has to do that every single year when I like go back to a shoe. So for example, in the summer flip-flops and in the winter boots. I would say that these were kind of comparable to most other shoes. I didn't really have any issues with breaking in the 1461s, the shoes. I don't know if that's because someone had already worn them before, but I really don't think they were worn enough for that to be the case. I just think that maybe it's the leather i'm really not sure i found them a little bit more comfortable than the boot it's not to say that i didn't find the boot comfortable as long as i wear a thick sock i don't find the breaking in too difficult and also one thing i would really 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 recommend is wearing a, a, a sock that comes up higher than the top of the boot the only time i've really had issues with these boots was once i went for a long walk with these boots and my socks weren't long enough and it like cut round my ankle and honestly that was not pleasant and it kind of scarred i might even still have scars so just bear that in mind be sensible wear long socks and thick socks don't wear them the first time on a two hour walk kind of break them in slowly more maybe when you're going to the supermarket or when you're going to be in the car for a lot of the day but that's kind of the same with any shoe it's common sense they're not cheap but i would really not say that they are wildly expensive the vegan 146s and the non-vegan 146s retail for 169 on the website but i have seen them in other places for for example asos for 149 you could also just wait for like another discount code and get it for a little bit cheaper they are available for slightly cheaper i've seen a few people talk about why the vegan ones are the same price as the non-vegan ones and apparently although the leather might not be as good the sole in the vegan one is slightly better than in the non-vegan one is it worth the investment that's really why you're here and really i think yes i really truly think that in particular the boot for me personally is 100 percent worth it if these went missing 
I probably would wait for a discount code, maybe have a look if I could find some nearly new secondhand, but I probably would replace these. I think sometimes in life there are pairs of shoes which will always be worth the investment because even if you don't use them this year or next year, they will be useful throughout your life. And I really think Doc Martens are kind of that, to be completely honest. And of course, I haven't pulled them apart. I can't tell you if they are actually worth it more than another shoe, but Doc Martens are like iconic and I really like the look of them. And I would personally probably just rather wear a pair of Doc Martens than another kind of similar pair that aren't Doc Martens. I still think that they kind of have that edge to them, which I think is quite cool. Let's say they are about £150. People will spend £100 on a really crappy made, very similar boots from Zara, which probably won't last as long. The design isn't, in my opinion, as thought out. I really, really highly doubt the sole is as thought out. They are very likely to not last anywhere near as long and end up in landfill. So I just think, especially if you're someone that could benefit from a slightly casual boot, of course, if you just wear heeled boots, these aren't for you. But if you like to go on walks, but don't find wellies that comfortable or that warm, I, I think these are great. If you just like to be outside a little bit in the winter or you just have use for a nice chunky winter boot, I really think this is a great one to go for. And I have a very similar th opinion with the other shoe. Although I don't think I wear them enough, Fingers crossed I can kind of start wearing them a bit more. But even though I don't wear them enough, I just think that they are like so iconic. They're made well. They are like a nice price point, I think. They're not like £700 like some shoes are, but equally they're not, I don't know, a £40 pair of shoes. They're a nice little middle, I think. I just think I'm going to get so much wear out of them for the next hopefully like decade I would say if not even longer I'm not sure how long they last I know lots of people that wear them every single day I don't do that I only really wear my Doc Martens if I'm going on a long walk or I'm like going around to someone's house I don't necessarily wear them to like work events or to like nicer things whereas I do know some people that do or that wear them every single day for work so I do think that they will last me a very long time they are the hardest working shoe I would say in my wardrobe in winter so in conclusion, yes, I think they are slightly more expensive than a Zara pair of very similar boots. I think they are durable. You're obviously paying a little bit for the brand, but I think equally you're paying for the knowledge the brand has and the research that they, that they have put into boots. I think they're quite timeless. I personally find them quite stylish. And although they are a slight investment, I really think that they are, wor they are worth it. I'm also just gonna feature a few outfits that I think work with these. But honestly, generally I just wear them with a pair of jeans, a jumper and a coat. For me, that's how they work best because they are quite a casual shoe. But the shoe, however, I do want to start dressing up a little bit. So let's see what outfits I come up with. So I always find filming horizontal, like full length, really difficult. But obviously, we're here for the shoes, so you need to be able to see them. I actually really like this outfit. I tried it on my white socks first and it was hideous. But actually, with the dark socks, I think it works. I think the satin skirt is quite dressy. The cardigan's kind of like smart cash. And then the shoes kind of add like a smart cash because they are fully black. They're not they're not a trainer. Um, I think this works. It's quite chunky. And it is an outfit I think I actually would wear. I'm really struggling to style the shoes. I've just been struggling for a while to style them. They look really good on other people. I just, I don't know why, I just don't think they look that good on me. But now I have them styled with kind of like a smart pair of trousers. I feel like this is very much what they would look like if you were wearing them to work. And honestly, I do think they look very good. These are gonna be way more comfortable than like, I don't know, a pair of dolly shoes if you want to wear that to work. Um, if I worked in retail, for example, I definitely think this is something that I would wear. I think that these look good and they're comfy and I'm just teaming them with a little jumper because I do find the black and white works well. I'm just not wearing enough colour, to be completely honest. I, I definitely do think you can wear these for colour. It's just that I'm struggling to wear them. I'm just struggling to wear colour. So this would be very much a generic outfit for winter if I were going on a walk. A big coat, a hat, a pair of jeans and a pair of Doc Martens. I would wear this whether I were going on, like, for a long walk in London. If I were going for a long walk in the forest somewhere, I would wear this. For me personally, now that I've worn these for a little while, these would be more than comfortable enough. I would be accompanied by the squeaking of the boots. That's the only downside. Finally, just like a very simple outfit that I would wear. This is quite a warm outfit, I must admit. But if I was going to someone's house, if I was going like somewhere nicer, like maybe if I wanted to go like sightseeing in central London, but I wanted to like look a little bit nicer, this coat's obviously a little, little bit smarter, I would go for something like this. I've got kind of like a more flared trouser with my boot. If I didn't want the yellow stitching, then obviously I would go for the mono black ones that I own. I think the yellow stitching makes it look like less like my uncle's shoes, to be completely honest. But do let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Please do let me know your thoughts. Do you have a pair of Doc Martens? Do you wear them? Are you thinking of getting a pair of Doc Martens? 
are you a Doc Martens stan? Because I know there are so many of them. But let me know your experience or whether you think they're worth the money. Let me know what worth the hype video you'd like to see next. And I will see you on Thursday. Bye.